Welcome back to Wet Acres. I'm Cody. This is Echo. We're gardening at home. Today we are under this shade tree. Nice big hemlock because it's about 77 degrees outside on March 24th already. So it's a hot one today so it's hard to be working in the greenhouse. But we're going to be in the greenhouse potting up some tomatoes for the plant sale because they're getting a little bit too big for their 72 wholesale tray. So we're gonna get those in some bigger cups. And I also saw online on Facebook, someone in town giving away some free irises. So I'm gonna go check that out and see what I can pick up. Now before we get started, I wanna let you know that I will be doing some weekly garden tours, weekly uh, vegetable garden tours or greenhouse updates really right now, but be putting out a video every week and I'll be trying to put out a video once a month for full property tours. Whether you guys want to watch it or not, I'm going to be putting them up because I want them for my records because I've been planting some bulbs this spring and I've already dug up a couple bulbs that I forgot was already in that location. So I need a little bit better record of where I'm planting stuff and what's where and when they bloom. So. Let's get into the greenhouse and get started with those tomatoes. Let's grow. All right, so we're in the greenhouse today because I need to get some tomatoes potted up. They're getting a little big for this uh, 72 cell tray. I have them in right now and it's time to get them into a larger container so they can start reaching and growing for getting bigger before the plant cell coming up. This is the first year I'm doing a plant cell so I don't really know what what to expect actually but I'm just trying to get some extra plants going and try and get them healthy enough to where someone might want to buy them not expecting too much from it but it's definitely something fun to do on the side while I have this greenhouse growing I like to get it real full in the spring here anyway so as much as I can start I'm gonna start we'll just take a quick look at things here some of the flowers are coming up. None of the vinca really is coming up. I got two little climber vincas coming up. Some petunias in the back. And the gazania is doing good. We got full germination on the gazania. And then the bunny tail grass is coming up. And just a little accent piece for a container. And then I got my herbs. I got the parsley chives. I'm definitely having a lot of problem germinating chives this year. I don't know if there's a trick to it or not but I'm gonna have to look into that the oregano is doing okay time there's a couple few coming up there cilantro is coming up just fine dill real easy to grow it loves it loves to germinate <clears throat> sage mint I only got one cell kind of mint maybe two coming up there lemon basil coming up just fine got five of those the rosemary is still germinating. That one takes a long time to do that. The Tokyo long bunching onions are doing great. I got about 10 or 12 per cell there. The hollyhocks got full germination, except for one cell. On the hollyhocks, that'll be a mix. Didn't get any tomato pineapple coming up yet here, but I sowed this tray, I think March 4th. These were my, okay, yeah, I sowed these a while ago, so I don't know why I didn't get any tomato pineapple. Got the Atomic Grape, they're definitely the biggest. The brandy wine's right behind it. Tomatillo Purple, oh, that's a tomatillo that didn't come up. I got two purple tomatillos. I got four ground cherries, four Aunt Molly's ground cherries, a valerian, and four huckleberries. Now I plant, Two, cell, two seeds per cell, so a couple of these came up multi in a cell. And last night I came out here, and you can kind of see this cell is a little bit beat up. But if the blueberries here had two per cell, so I pulled them out, separated them, and I got them all put into cups. All the extras, there's the three right there, the blueberries. And then I got some of the ground cherries and the uh, red cherry, pineapple. Any of the extra tomatoes I pulled out and put into another pot so I didn't lose any. 
I don't like to just cut them. I like to utilize everything that germinates. Got some Chernobyl germinating there, some chocolate stripes like this one. I can just pop these out and then I'll pull one, put one in a cell that didn't germinate and replant the one back in the cell to finish. Got some coming up here too. It's the Ace 55. Tomatoes are really starting to germinate now. Doing real well there. I got this couple cells here, not much to show there. The endive we sowed on 319 and the sorrel, they're starting to germinate. And then I got calendula coming up here in this cell. Nothing so far on this tray with uh, some nasturtium, some San Marzano, some marigolds in the back there. I'm trying to get started early. Ring of fire cayenne pepper and this corner here is a castor bean. Had to soak those seeds for 24 hours before planting those, so they might be a little slow. And then I got in the back here the uh, these gherkins are getting all tangled together now. I'm gonna have to pull these out, get a good look at them, and separate them so they don't get too far tangled. I lost some snapdragons to dampening off. That happens but still got enough to use i'm sure nebraska's are looking good that's time in the back there it's coming along good this nice green patch here are calendula they're doing great the rest of the snapdragons in the back there and then i got some more herbs here oh these herbs need water i got rosemary cilantro that's parsley mint oregano and chives in the back this definitely needs some water i'm gonna have to get that next to that you can see the basil's getting real big almost two inches there they're filling out real nice in the back i have my peppers easter pepper bell pepper banana pepper and jalapeno looks like enough of those germinated and then this big tray is what i'll be working on today it's real gorgeous a beautiful tray of tomatoes here definitely the best looking tray in the whole place but these are getting pretty big so and there's a couple per cell I'm gonna have to get in there now that they're this big like I can see in here right there you see these there's two here about four inches tall there's two per cell I will just cut those because they're too tangled together to separate very easily so if there's any multis in here, I'll cut them out so it's just one per cell. And then I'll up pot it into some 9 ounce plastic cups. Now to finish over here, I got some more basil, sage, dill. They're all coming up great. And some onions and then I got my backup cauliflower here. Brassicas and cabbage. More onions and more peppers. These peppers will be for the plant cell. I need to get them potted up after the tomatoes. And then here I have Crispedia. That's just starting to germinate. Red onion seems to germinate a lot faster than my white onions. That's white sweet Spanish and that's red wing red onion. Red's definitely a lot faster. My tree cabbage is coming up. I got two or three of those. And these were Shasta as you can see I mislabeled those. They're not actually Shastas, they're just an African daisy. And then just today, you can see here, right there, that's a green globe artichoke coming up. I originally thought, no, that's funny because, so I had some Brussels sprouts for dinner the one time and they were really good. I didn't realize I liked Brussels sprouts, but now I do. So I wanted to grow some Brussels sprouts, but I kind of thought they were called artichokes, so I bought artichoke seeds and germinated them. Anyway, I got to go buy some Brussels sprout seeds and germinate those, but I'll still grow the artichoke and try that and see if I like the artichoke now. And beside the artichoke, I have Pabana that I'm still waiting to see any signs of germination there. But that's pretty much what I got going on right now. Got some bigger stuff down here. This is uh, purple sprouting broccoli, some pak choy, cauliflower, 
that's all getting real big. I might have started those a little early. That's why I have that back backup set. And then the jelly melon and potato cucumber going wild in there. And I believe there's some more broccoli scattered in there too. When I started up potting, I didn't have the best system. I just used what pots I had available from last year. And it got pretty much, it got real, uh, not very space efficient, I guess you could say. So what I did was I bought these plastic cups, 9 ounce plastic cups, and I'm doing all my up potting with those now. Seems to be a little bit more space efficient. I'm just going to give my seeds here a misting. Keep the top of the soil moist. Keep it from drying out too much. And then I'll get started on those tomatoes, getting them up potted. So I pruned my lavender and decided to just throw all the dried branches into a pot and putting it right beside that fan gives you a good nice fragrance during the in, inside the greenhouse which that was nice to do. And over here my dad brought home some hyacinths but this one he accidentally chopped the bulb off of so I threw that in some water and it looks like the bloom's going to still open up. so. We keep that in here because I love hyacinths and the fragrance I really enjoy. Now this pot here, I put in some peas and some beans. You can see they're coming up. And this is just straight cow manure. It's what I've been using to spread all my squash mound in my garden, different areas. Try and uh, get some compost in there. I just wanted to do that test right there with peas and beans to see if it had any of the poison in it that can plague your plants if you use cow manure and from an unreliable source. All right, let's get potting tomatoes. All right, the first thing you want to do before you start potting up or even taking some or even uh, dibbing out some of them, separate them, you want to make sure you got them all watered because they come out in the plug a lot nicer whenever they're fully watered, not dry and brittle. I'm going to put some water in here, just make sure they suck up everything they need. Should be enough. You can see the roots are already shooting out of the holes. These are, probably could have potted these up last week, but this is when I got the time. So, I'm doing them today. Now my setup is some plastic cups. I'm just going to take these cups, what I do, take my snips, one, two, right through the edge. I'm going to get all my cups ready like this with holes before I even put any soil in them. Okay, now that I got all my cups, I'm going to go ahead and mark them. Now I planted, I believe, six of each variety. So I'm going to take six cups and my Sharpie, write the names of Baxter Bush will be the first one I start off with. What happened to this marker? Never had that happen before. Weird. Anyway, these will be Baxter Bush. Gonna get all these marked. Okay, I got them all marked off. Baxter Bush, I got the six that I'm going to be using. So what I do is get my bucket. 
I just get a plastic bucket and fill it with potting soil. Any potting mix will work just fine. I, I'm using miracle Grow moisture control. It's a light blue bag. So I put it in the bucket, go ahead and moisten it. So it's already pre-moistened, holds together nice and clumpy, and then breaks apart. I keep a plastic, I keep a piece of plastic over my bucket to help hold the moisture in while I'm not working on them. And then when I come in, I'm ready to go. Don't have to mix any soil. Then we get all these cups filled up and then get to the next step. Just to show you what I'm doing, take the cup, I just scoop a heaping pile into the cup like that, and I'll just push that down in. You want to pack it in a little bit, and it's not too firm yet, so I'll just take my thumb, wiggle my thumb deep into the cup as far as I can get it, and make a hole for the plug. I'll just pack in the sides. So now I have a cup like that with a hole deep down in. The whole thing's ready to plant. My bucket down. I'm gonna start with Baxter Bush. And I got this nifty little set, little scoop here for plugs and stuff on Amazon. It came with the dibber tool, which I've been using to separate them all in the cells and some little tweezers and such for smaller things. I'm going to use the spoon and I'm just going to reach into the side of the cell. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm going to reach into the side of the cell, work down the wall of the cell all the way to the bottom. And then I'm going to put a little pressure on the opposite side as I scoop. Gently scoop. I do a little shaking to try and work it out gently and just slide it up. Just like that. Scoop it right out. Get a nice beautiful tomato plant, not root bound, just ready to drop in. Look how easy that is. I'm gonna get these scooped out and plopped into the cups. So they're all dropped into the cups. I'm just going to gently press the whole cell down in and then I'm going to cave in the sides. Gently pack it in around the stem. Press the cell in deep and cave in the sides on top of the cell. This is the simplest way I find to do it. I don't have to keep adding soil. Press it in, backfill, and it's done, ready to set up into a tray. Get these all positioned. You can see this one here still has two tomato plants in it. So what I'm going to do, make sure that's still the strongest one. It's not always the biggest one, but find the strongest one. Cut the other one out. It had its chance. Cut it as low as you can to the soil level so it doesn't try and re-sprout. And this one also has two in it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the smaller one out. Just throw it outside. And I'm going to backfill this one in. There you have it.
that's how you transplant tomatoes. It's already labeled, got a clear cup, got the drainage holes. So I'm gonna work my way through the rest of this tray of 72 tomatoes. And since I pre-moistened all the cells beforehand and I pre-moistened the potting mix that I planted into, I won't have to water these for at least probably three to five days depending on how hot the weather gets in the greenhouse. Alright, so I ran out of potting soil. I have a couple cups left, but pretty much done right now. I'm going to head out, get those irises and pick up some potting soil and cups, come back, get this thing done. All right, so this is the score we got while I was out. Now the ad said free irises, two bags. Well, definitely got an iris with a root. Looks like there's about three, maybe four in that bag. And this one, Maybe four or five in that bag. She said they were purple with a yellow accent, which would be nice. She also was kind enough to go ahead and dig up some more plants. This one is spider wart, I believe. A little purple flower. And then this is, there's some ground cover mixed into it, but there's some lilies. Maybe another type of lily in there. And then she gave me a mystery root, so I'm really not sure what that is. I'm going to have to plant that and keep an eye on it, see what that turns into. And then she actually, I helped her, but we dug up a big daisy right out of the front yard. And this thing was growing on top of landscaping fabric, so it's got a real flat root ball there just poked through the root ball enough to grow or through the landscaping fabric enough to grow so now I got some more things to plant before it starts raining have to figure out where they go and then maybe you'll see them on the property tour updates so subscribe down below and you'll be able to follow along as the property comes together
And there they are, 72 tomatoes. I potted. I actually got 74. Is this one 73? Because this one was stuck in there, a little extra. So extras are fine. I'll put that in a cup to keep growing. But here we go. I got them all potted up to nine ounce cups, and that's what they'll stay in until the plant sale, which will be end of April, beginning of May. All right, that's all for this one. I'll see me on the next one.